Hey guys, Dr. Epic here, back with some more Metagel. Today I wanted to talk about perhaps the most important element of the Mass Effect games, the dialogue. I'm sorry, I know that was important, but you perform Gilbert and Sullivan? I am the very model of a scientist Salarian, I've studied species Turian, Asari, and Batarian. More precisely, I want to talk about how the different games treat the dialogue mechanics, and which game did it best. This will, as always, be a subjective take, but I will try to identify objective and relatable elements as always. First, thank you for clicking. I am the very model of a scientist Solarian. Thanks for sharing what you've learned, Morden. First game up for analysis is Mass Effect 1, the OG. Now, it's no secret Mass Effect 1 had some of the most memorable dialogue in the franchise. Because it's a big stupid jellyfish. Mass Effect 1 was, spoiler alert, Bioware's first attempt at a Mass Effect game. They knew at this time that creating good dialogue was paramount to the success of a Mass Effect game. They wasted no time beginning to design a dialogue system that would offer captivating gameplay. Eventually, they landed on the fundamental building block of the Mass Effect franchise, namely, the conversation wheel. Its setup is fairly simple, but it is one that gives developers and story writers a lot of freedom nonetheless in how they want to design a conversation scene. To the left is usually conversation options that lets you investigate and dig deeper, without progressing the conversation further. Like when a cashier asks you cash or credit, and you answer, hold up, you remind me of my dead father. She then replies, I can't be your dead father, because I'm actually just three little kids in a trench coat. To this, you can re reply usually with one nicer option there, and one mean option down there. Both are usually non sequiturs to conclude the investigation, quote unquote. Like, ah, I see, thank you kind sir, and ah, I see, you stupid th Now we move over to the right side of the conversation wheel. This is where things get really good. Here as well, you have the nicer option, known as the Paragon option. At the top, this is the good guy option in short. In the middle, you have the neutral Bruh. option, designed not to offend anyone or to just be straight to business, as it were. The bottom option is known as the renegade option, and this is basically the bad cop option. But using paragon or renegade conversation options, you get paragon and renegade charisma points, respectively. The neutral option gives you no points. Your Paragon and Renegade Charisma score can be increased exponentially by choosing the right stats and attributes for a character in the skill tree. Because it is, the consequences of choosing dialogue options is not only about whether or not you hurt the NPC's feelings, they have a direct impact on what kind of character your Shepherd will turn out to be through the course of the game. Another feature of the Mass Effect 1 conversation system is that some conversation options are locked unless you have the right amount of Charisma score. These are usually important dialogue options, like whether or not you will manage to convince the slave of the Lovecraftian super monsters to break his mind-controlling shackles, or whether or not you will get a discount at the store. Both equally terrifying endeavors and interactions, as everyone who has tried to haggle in real life can attest to. The locked conversation options creates a strong incentive for story-driven players, which in a single-player-only game should be every player, to strive towards maximum charisma. But there is only so much charisma points to farm in Mass Effect 1, leading players to having to decide which path to choose, the Renegade or the Paragon way. The Paragon way is often the best way to make everyone happy, but sometimes you just want to lay down the business, you know, since it's a game and not real life. Now let's get to the ranking of this conversation system. I really like a lot of the lines in Mass Effect 1, the Renegade lines in particular I find to be fairly brutal and memorable, and Bioware even makes you have to take a stance on some pretty difficult moral topics throughout the games, like for instance whether or not you want to support Rebecca in regards to in euro genetic modification of their unborn child, and whether or not to allow research on fallen soldier bodies. In my experience, I also found Mass Effect 1 to have the most dialogue options available to choose from of the franchise. A negative Nelly might say there are too much conversation options, and that it makes it so that the options that are there feel watered down and unimportant. I think personally, in a story-driven RPG, having a lot of options for people interested in the lore and such is perfectly fine. It's like my dog used to say, it's better to have a bone too many and not need it, than to have a bone too little and actually need it. The only sad thing I want to shine a light on with the Mass Effect 1 system is that by driving players towards choosing only Paragon and Renegade, 
you take away some incentive for player freedom. Because if the best choices are locked and require these high charisma scores, you don't want to lose out on points by, for example, sometimes doing paragon things and losing the renegade points you need to unlock the locked renegade combo option. The neutral options become really unattractive. There are so many of these I've never touched even though many times they are what I really thought and meant at the time. Couple this with you having unlimited time to make a conversation choice, unlike for example Telltale's Walking Dead games, and you will most likely always choose the one furthering your charisma score, unless you truly are a true maverick. What's the order, Commander? All in all, I give Mass Effect 1 dialogue system an 8 out of 10. Next up is Mass Effect 2. Mass Effect 2 has some really good lines. You're working too hard. <laughs> and creates a lot of difficult choices for all players, whether you choose the good guy path or the bad guy path. Because even though the renegades have the simple options, quote unquote, sometimes it's really difficult to press the button to actually go through with it. Let him live, I let you leave. Kill him, I do the same to you. Let him go. You got what you want to kill me. Are we free to go? How do I know you won't shoot me in the back as soon as I turn around? Mass Effect 2 basically brings over the Mass Effect 1 dialogue system with the conversation wheel, containing the Renegade, Neutral and Paragon options with some sprinkles of locked conversation options here and there, requiring sufficient charisma score to choose, and this is a score that you can gain. Mass Effect 2 innovates though and throws in a curveball, the so-called interrupt options. These prompts can appear randomly at any given point in the conversation, and you have zero option to stall and sit down and think through it, you have to act on gut instinct. The interrupt option is either Paragon or Renegade, granting you the relevant score should you choose to attempt the interrupt. Some of the best lines in Mass Effect comes in conjunction with interrupt options. How about goodbye? This I find to be a really good innovation. The only gripe I have is that they can be very vague when they appear on screen, like how am I actually supposed to know what I will do if I press the button? Often this is clued to you by context, like Shepard might pull up a gun and point it at something so you intrinsically understand that the interruption consists of uh, pulling the trigger, most likely. Overall, I think context clues work uh, perfectly fine enough in Mass Effect 2. The interrupt options improve the Mass Effect 1 system in my opinion, making it slightly better by introducing some more conversation tension even on replays. They also add another layer of complexity to the dialogue map, different outcomes. I also think Mass Effect 2 has a good selection of conversation options, though fewer than Mass Effect 1. It comes across as more streamlined and not too much to the point that it's grating or annoying skipping through too many options. I think they did a great job here. The same graph pertaining to the fact that Mass Effect 2 also encourages you to stay away from neutral options and not to mix and match Paragon and Renegade choices I think is a little bit sad, but a natural consequence of the Paragon uh, Renegade morality system. With that, I'll give the Mass Effect 2 dialogue and charisma system a 9 out of 10. Next up is Mass Effect 3. Mass Effect 3 has some really good lines, like actually really good lines. Stand in the ashes of a trillion dead souls and ask the ghosts if honor matters. This silence is your answer. And some amazing lines. You. Big stupid jellyfish. The biggest innovation was perhaps the reputation system. Instead of the two opposing Renegade and Paragon meters, you had one meter that was being filled with either Renegade or Paragon score, taking up each other's space. As said on the Mass Effect Wikipedia, in short, reputation acts as a multiplier for the player's alignment and provides access to more dialogue choices. Reputation can be gained by the usual stuff like conversation choices. I didn't personally mind this implementation any way, any one way or the other. I think the quality of the lines is overall very good in Mass Effect 3 as well. In Mass Effect 3 they stick to the good old conversation wheel, now complete with the Paragon and running and interrupt. One thing I noticed fairly quickly was that there was a lot less conversation options, a lot more forced conversation with Shepard, and basically no neutral options. All of this makes Mass Effect 3 even more streamlined than Mass Effect 2, at the cost of player freedom. I have a feeling that this was done so that the writers can better write their version of Shepard, like a war-torn PTSD afflicted veteran, something these spooky dreams contribute to as well. I understand where that wish was coming from and I think it was executed okay enough, but I think it's sad that it happened at expense to player freedom 
and the conversation to plurality. I also noticed a trend in that the renegade options often seem to be either downright evil or objectively the worst option. I felt the nuance of Mass Effect 1 and Mass Effect 2 disappear a little on my first playthroughs of Mass Effect 3. But here we have to bear in mind the nature of Renegade in Mass Effect 3. In Mass Effect 3, the Renegade is the means justifies the ends kind of guy, or, or the cold hard calculus of war kind of guy, having to make hard sacrifices. And if you make a lot of crappy decisions in the previous games, like I did with this playthrough, it's gonna be crappy in Mass Effect 3. I noticed that the Renegade options often were the best in regards to war assets when you have a bad starting point in Mass Effect 3, but on other playthroughs where I had done everything right, so to speak, in the previous games, then the Renegade and Mass Effect 3 were often objectively bad, at least contained within the game itself and in regards to squad mates and war assets. Like the Renegade Genophage decision. If intentional from Bioware, I think this was actually kinda brilliant in a sense. But on the other side, for the replayers, this might lead to Paragon being the objectively best path in Mass Effect 3, leading to a loss of freedom. Overall, I think Mass Effect 3 had good dialogue system though, with the quality writing and uh, really tough choices at times. In summation, I'll give Mass Effect 3 a score of 8 out of 10, losing some points for having fewer options and less freedom. Next up is Mass Effect Andromeda. Mass Effect Andromeda has some iconic lines. To whom? And your goddamn father. Sorry, my face is tired from dealing with everything. And contrary to however justified popular opinion, Mass Effect Andromeda does have some good dialogue as well. However, veteran players will immediately notice something is different from the Shepard games. Gone is the Renegade and Paragon system for one. Gone is the reputation system. And the only thing remaining is the good old conversation wheel with unlimited pondering time, save for the occasional interrupt. In Mass Effect Andromeda, I experience that you can practically choose between being a boring professional guy and a try to be somewhat kind of funny guy. Just like any real life office job. No more loose cannon renegade or paragon of virtue war hero. I get why the devs did this, if it was to make Ryder come across as a noob compared to the legendary alliance soldier Shepard, and that perhaps across sequels Ryder would eventually become hard, uh, a hardened tough guy as well. This would uh, make a distinction between Ryder and Shepard, so as to avoid Ryder not just being a lackluster Shepard clone. But the biggest problem is that this good guy bad guy removal compounds into is the removal of any scoring system, morality, or charisma system. As phrased on the Mass Effect Wikipedia, Mass Effect Andromeda abandoned the morality system. Pathfinder Ryder's current conversation choices no longer determine future gameplay consequences. This means, basically, no more locked conversation options requiring you to gain charisma points to unlock them. This further means, like too much of the choices in Mass Effect Andromeda, especially if the game is completely scrapped with no sequel, that conversation options are in practice impactless outside of the concrete consequences. This is very sad and washes out the Mass Effect gameplay experience, at least for me. The conversation options do however still have traditional direct impact, like when you say, no I don't want to save your mother, instead of yeah, I'll save your mother, then you can't end up romancing their mother because she wasn't saved. The reason behind the removal of conversational scoring and the so-called morality system was that according to the Mass Effect Wikipedia, the developers at Bioware felt that the players were too often deciding to make a Paragon or Renegade choice for their character based on a predetermined personality, regardless of the context of their conversation. This is a legitimate point and I'm glad they're not afraid to innovate the conversation system. We also have to separate the question in regards to the morality scoring system from the question in regards to Paragon and Renegade conversation options. I think the essence of Paragon and Renegade should return, meaning a good guy Paragon option and a bad guy Renegade option. Ryder is too featureless and personality lacking when you can't make these bold conversation decisions like in the OG games, in my opinion. In regards to scoring and charisma, I don't get paid enough to come up with a better solution. I doubt I can, even. I mean, I'm just an epic doctor. I am excited to see what they do with the next Mass Effect game. Perhaps they take a page out of the Telltale Games book and introduce some timed conversation options where appropriate. Overall, I have to rate Mass Effect Andromeda Dialogue System a 7 out of 10 at most. Could be worse. How? It loses some points because a lot of the lands simply lack charisma like the Paragon Charm and Renegade Intimidation of Shepard. Furthermore, the conversation option choices have less impact in the story since no conversations are locked and unlockable by convo choices like in the OG games. 
and the only consequences are the in-game reactions of the NPCs and the consequences in the sequels, which don't exist at this point in time. This score might change if the sequels cast a new positive light on the Andromeda dialogue. Now, I have no problem defending Mass Effect Andromeda for the things it did right, but I have to be honest and say that the conversation systems in Andromeda simply didn't impress me as much as the Shepard games. Overall, I think Mass Effect 2 innovated the most positively and improved upon Mass Effect 1, while Mass Effect 3 removed a little too much options and freedom, and Andromeda removing uh, too much soul from the system. Based on that, I think Mass Effect 2 has the best dialogue system in Mass Effect franchise to date. It's not perfect, like I said, the reasoning behind Andromeda's design choices are legitimate, and I hope Bioware will continue to improve it in the coming games. From what we have to go off of, I do think Mass Effect 2 comes out on top. What do you think though? Do you agree or disagree? Please do let me have it. Do you have any ideas how to improve the Mass Effect conversations and morale systems? If you comment, some developer may see it below, or someone who knows the developer, and there we have the thing uh, evolving. So you know the you know the thing. And there we have the ball rolling. Other than that, I just want to wish you a fantastic day, and remember to absolutely castrate that subscribe button. Stop grabbing, signing off.